we will now talk about quotient and how to take derivatives of quotient. We already talked about how to take derivatives of sums, difference, and product. This is the next operation that we yet to discover a rule for. So uh, the quotient rule, um, as with many things that are quotients, you can actually think of a quotient as a product. So this question is saying, if my function looks like this, f divided by g, and I call this function k, how do I take a derivative of k? Now, in order to not introduce something completely new, what we're going to try to do is actually turn this into a product and apply our already derived product rule, right? So k is just f over g. And I can obviously rewrite this as a product by simply cross multiplying. So I have k times g equals f. And now once that's a product, I can take a derivative of that using the product rule, okay? So a derivative of this, and then the product rule suggests, um, the product rule will be applied to the left-hand side here. So the product rule suggests that it's the derivative of the first function times the second, plus the first time it's derivative of the second, and the derivative on the right-hand side is just f prime, okay? So this resulted by just applying the product rule. Now the thing that I'm after is k prime, okay? So I'm actually after this little piece right here. So I'm going to solve this entire equation for k prime. So after a couple of steps that I encourage you to check by yourself, you should get f prime minus k g prime all over g, okay? So again, this is me isolating for k prime and then dividing through by g. Now, this is what I have so far. I would, my function is in terms of f and g, so I would really like that my right-hand side here only has f, g, and their derivatives. So I have a small problem here that k is still inside there. Now, the good thing about k is that I know that k, well, actually from here is probably better, is just f over g. So I'm going to plug that in for k here. So I have f prime minus k, which is really just f over g times g prime all over g, okay? So notice that this guy here is just k, okay? And now what I'm going to do is do common denominators on the top and combine with the denominators on the bottom in order to not have a double decker of a fraction here. So I'm going to skip one step in combining all of this together, but please go right ahead and actually work out the algebra. So my quotient rule is going to be just that. If I have a function of the form f over g and I wanna take a derivative of it, the derivative is f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared. If you prefer, it might be easier to think of that in terms of top and bottom. So if I take a derivative of the function that is a um, fraction that is numerator and denominator, top and bottom, then the quotient rule says that it's derivative of the top times the bottom function minus the top times the derivative of the bottom function, all divided by the square of my bottom function. Okay, so this is the quotient rule. Now let's try this in applications. Uh, one, of, um, my, one of the most astonishing applications of this course is the application to, of crows and whelks. Um, so crows are, uh, these particular crows are Northwestern crows, so the ones that actually live in our region and down in um, Washington in the United States. Um, and they feed on whelks, which are essentially just these little mollusks. Now, the mollusks are in a shell. That's what protects them from being, from being eaten very easily. So crows, in order to break an actual shell of a whelk, drop it onto the rocky parts of the beach, hoping that it will break. Okay, so what happens if it doesn't? The crow picks it up again, flies up, drops it again. If it doesn't break, it picks it up, it flies up, and drops it again. Biologists have been noticing that crows actually tend to drop whelks from about five meters of height consistently, okay? So crows never fly too low and they never fly way too high. They tend to be around five meters of height. And the biologists ask some, themselves a question, why is that the case? 
Okay, so in particular, Canadian scientist Rito Zak decided to really investigate this problem. Um, and so he went out onto a rocky beach, grabbed himself a bunch of whelks, and started dropping them from different heights. Okay, so this graph, um, the data points on this graph are the actual points from one of his experiments. Um, and then he managed to fit a function to this graph, which describes how many drops were required to break the whelk from the given height. Okay, so let's just take a look at this graph for a minute to really understand what it represents. So for example, if I take the height to be, let's say five meters, Okay, so it's this height here, five meters, right here. It says that, so the Y coordinate here is, I don't know, approximately six. So that means that from the height of five meters, it will take about six drops to break the whelk. Okay, so notice that of course the higher you drop the whelk from, the fewer drops are required. So if you drop the whelk from 10 meters, the number of drops that are required is going to be less, like approximately three. If you drop the whelk from two meters, then you require approximately 20 drops, okay? So the height is not very much, but you're gonna have to fly in back and forth quite a bit, okay? So five meters seems to be sort of somewhere in between. Now, having collected a lot of data, um, Rito Zak managed to fit an actual function to it. And this is the formula for that function that describes the number of drops from the height h that are required to break the whelk. Okay? And the question here is to find the derivative of that function, uh, compute it at four, four meters, and interpret that quantity. It is, first of all, a sum of two things. Um, so we can apply the sum rule and take a derivative of each piece separately. Now, the first piece is easy to take a derivative of, but the second piece, of course, is a quotient. So we will have to apply our newly discovered quotient rule, okay? So first of all, uh, I can say that I'm taking a derivative of 1 plus taking a derivative of 20.4 over h minus 0.84. Okay, and then in the next step, I'm actually going to proceed to take the derivatives. The derivative of one is zero because it's a constant. But the second portion, I'm going to apply the product, uh, the quotient rule, which of course is given by this formula from the previous slide. Okay, so I'm gonna have, so my top is 20.4, my bottom is h minus 0.84. So I'm going to go through the quotient rule carefully. So first it's the derivative of the top and I'm just, I'm not going to take derivatives yet. I'm just going to write it out because it's the first time I'm doing the quotient rule. Okay. So the more you practice with it, the more steps you're going to be able to skip. So minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. All right. So now that I have it written out, let's take derivatives of the separate components. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's take a look. The derivative of 20.4, 20.4 is a constant, so the derivative of that is going to be zero. So this guy is actually just going to go away. Zero times anything is just zero. So my first portion of the quotient rule here has actually managed to simplify itself quite a bit, minus, and then I have 20.4 times the derivative of this piece. Now that's two pieces. And our difference rule tells us I can take a derivative of one at a time. So the derivative of h with respect to h, so it's the power, power rule, the, the power comes down. So it's one times h to power zero, which is just one, minus the derivative of 0.84, which is a constant. So the derivative of that is zero. And it's all over h minus 0.84 squared. Okay, so simplifying this just a little bit more, on top I get minus 20.4, and on the bottom I get h minus 0.84 squared. Okay, this is my derivative, so this is my part one of the question, and part two says find the derivative at four. So now I just have to plug in four into my expression for the derivative, so let me just write this out for completeness here, four minus 0.84 squared, which turns out to be uh, approximately minus 2.04. And now what are the units? 
Okay, if I am to interpret a quantity, I really want to know what the units are. Um, and this is once again where it might be more useful to use the D uh, notation, D, DF by DX type notation, right? So in, as opposed to writing this, I could have written that it's a derivative of my drops function with respect to height. And this tells me that the units on top are drops, the units on the bottom are the units for my height. So this will be drops per meter, okay? So interpreting this means that in four, at four meters, the number of required drops decreases because this is negative by approximately two drops a meter. And now let's take a look at what that really means on the graph. Well, so if I go from four to five meters, is that true that the number of required drops decreased by approximately two? Well, yeah, sure. So this was approximately seven, and now this is approximately five on the x-axis, right? Oops. So the rise over run here does look like it's approximately minus two. So with every meter that the crow flies higher, the number of drops decreases by about two when it's at four meters. Notice that, for example, between eight and 10, the number of required drops doesn't really decrease as much, as opposed to, on the other hand, between two and three, the number uh, of required drops decreases by quite a bit. So this, once again, highlights the fact that the derivative will really depend on the point you're computing it at. Okay, so this is how one applies the quotient rule when the function is given to you analytically. Let's now take a look at one example where we can apply all types of differentiation rules, but without having a function's formula. So in this case, I have two function graphs, a graph for the F function and the graph for the G function, but the derivatives that I am asked to compute do involve a product of these two functions, a quotient of these two functions, and some kind of a combination of a sum and the product here. Okay, now all the same rules apply. It's just I won't be able to compute derivatives analytically here. I will have to get them from the graph. Okay, so the first step here, this is a product. So if I were to compute the derivative of H, I will first of all have to apply the product rule. Okay, so product rule here. Okay, and the product rule says it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Now notice that here I'm asked to compute the derivative at a specific point three. So let me plug that in for x. So it's f prime at three times g of three plus f of three times g prime of three. And now for the values of those particular pieces, all I have to do is look at the graph and figure out what those values are on the graph, okay? So for example, f of f prime of three here, remember that on the graph, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at three. So at three here, this is where this point is. What is the slope of the tangent line at three? Well, I have to sketch myself a little tangent line here, and I notice that the slope here is zero. So this value is zero times g of three. Now it doesn't really actually matter what g of three is because anything times zero will be zero, but I'm going to write the number in just for completeness. So g of three here, if I were to look it up here, this is my three, g of three is actually two. So this would be times two plus f of three, which from the graph of f, this is just the value of the function at three, which is three times the derivative of g at three. So once again, the derivative from the graph means the slope of the tangent line at three. So I'm going to figure out what is the slope of the tangent line at three. Now, luckily for me, g is just a straight line. So the tangent line to the straight line is itself. So I just have to figure out what is the slope of this line? Well, it's rise over run, and doesn't matter which two points you take, the slope of this line will always be a constant and it's rising one and it's running two. So one half, one half. So overall my answer here will be three halves. Okay, 
So differentiation rules don't change, but the way that you attain the values for the derivatives and the function values might depend on the representation that you're given of the function, whether it's analytical and you can just plug it in or it's graphical and you're going to have to read it off the graph. Okay. So for the first part, for the second part here, of course, I have to do the quotient rule here in order to figure out what this is. Okay, and so I'm going to simply apply the quotient rule first, f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x all over g of x squared. Okay, and here I'm asked to compute this at point two. So I can replace all of my x's with a two and figure out what the actual um, values of those are using the graph, much like in part one. I'm going to leave this for you to finish off and I'm just going to talk uh, quickly about the part three here. So for the part three here, I'm asked to take a derivative of this function, which of course is first of all a product, but then more subtly, sorry, a sum, and then more subtly a product, okay? So be very careful about the operations that might not be as obvious as others. So notice that this portion here is actually a product, which means that if you take a derivative of it, you will have to apply a product rule, okay? So let's go through this carefully. So for the derivative here, the sum rule says I can take the derivatives of those two pieces separately. So the derivative of f of x is just f prime of x plus, but now I have to take a derivative of x times g of x. That's a product, so I have to apply a product rule. The product rule says it's the derivative of the first piece, which is just x. So the derivative of x is just one times the function g of x plus I leave the first function alone and I take a derivative of the second. Okay, so this is what the product rule on that second part portion of the function gave me. Okay, and now once again, I'm asked to compute this at a particular point, one in this case. So I'm going to replace my x's here with a one and read the values off of the graph that I have to. 